Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disown, and I'm uh, wondering if you guys could help me pick a new phone. Um, currently, I have the uh, Samsung uh, uh, Galaxy S7 Edge, and I do like it. And I, uh, I've been with uh, Samsung for quite some time, starting with the, uh, the probably the, the Note 3, and uh, and, and onwards. So I went for the Note 7, of course, that blew up, and uh, so now I've got this. And uh, my my main priorities for phones. Uh, they need to be fairly snappy, you know. I mean, I, I, you know, you rely on them so much now for emails, watching your, you checking your YouTube stuff, and all this lot. You need it to be fast and snappy. You want, I want good battery life, and I want a good camera because I do take some of my pictures of, uh, you know, the things I'm reviewing using the, the the phone on here, and I often also have it overhead to take the uh, overhead shots. So I need some good cameras, uh, still shots, and for video as well. And you know, one thing I always liked about having uh, an android phone was i can just plug it into my computer and uh you know get the files off there dead easy i like that and i i hate itunes i i did try the uh, iphone 7 plus and it was a great phone but you know it just seemed to be too locked down for me to be honest and i uh, i hate i do hate itunes <laughs> i do really do and i was never really a great fan of uh, apple per se because i didn't really like the way they were you know trying to, to lock it down to you know to their system you couldn't uh, sideload uh, apps like i do like um uh uh showbox you know you can uh, you can watch all kinds of shows and stuff on there you know just sideload it on and watch that and i did like that but you know i recognize that they do make apple make great devices you know they're, they're rock solid the fast you know the battery life on the iphone 7 plus was great too and it you know it didn't miss a beat so you know i was, I was close to to making the switch at that point so the two phones i am thinking of um you know are the razor phone and the uh, iphone uh, 10 or x iphone 10 i suppose and um you know so but you know what it's like you get stuck in an ecosystem don't you whether you know whether it's xbox playstation windows um apple mac that type of thing you get do get stuck in a bit of an ecosystem and it's the same with phones isn't it now i've been in android for forever I've got all the apps, I've got all my contact, you know, you, you, you name it. Um, I've been stuck in that uh, ecosystem. And the same is true if you've uh, been an Apple user from day one. So, you know, is it easy to switch? You know, I, I, I don't know. And of course, I've got the uh, the Samsung Galaxy S2 watch here, which which I love. And I understand Apple has their own watch too, uh, which is supposed to be a, is a great watch as well. So, but of course, it's extra expense. So, um, the Razer um phone just just i do like the razor razor because they're, they're a smaller company and i like to support those guys i did have the uh, the razor um edge tablet now i did feel that they didn't support that very well though you know the accessories came and gone you know this you know so i often wonder how long will the accessories be around for uh, for razor you know will they support it that type of thing but anyway it's always good to small uh, support the small guy as well so um i thought let's just look at some of the specs and some of the pros and cons from what I can see uh, I have, of course have not tried any of these yet and, and perhaps you could uh, just just pipe in and give me your thoughts as well so looking at the uh, iPhone X first off is the size you know even this uh, yeah you know it's S7 edge it's hard sometimes to get to the edge but you know it's not that wide but you can just do it and um, you know, unless you've got some kind of alien thumbs, it's, it's it can be hard to reach. So, looking at the uh, the, the size of this, um, the width of the iPhone uh, 10 is uh, 2.79 inches, or about 71 millimeters, and the Razer is about uh, 70, you know, 78 millimeters, um, so about uh, three inches. So that's wider. You know, the Razer is wider. That's going to be harder to freaking reach this uh, side of the screen. So that's a bit of a downside. It's also taller. Um, about 158 millimeters versus 143 so you know fitting in your pocket I mean this is not so bad and I even to be honest I had the note 3 so the, probably the height doesn't matter it's the width um, it's probably the main thing for me so that uh, weight doesn't bother me I prefer a phone that weighs a little bit heavier because you know it's in your pocket you feel it that's fine screen size now see the iPhone has a 5.8 inch diagonal screen the uh, Razer 5.7 to me that's a draw you're not going to tell the difference between that it looks the same to me and of course a big factor on the Razer 
is the 120 hertz panel is that going to make a difference you know people say oh it does it's a lot smoother it's certainly you can tell it on the computer screen you know when you're moving the mouse around and the, the games look smoother and so forth but you know i don't really play games on my phone so you know i don't have a problem moving around the biggest problem i have is with the uh, my android phones here when they get full they become really slow you know so much so i mean like today i got quite frustrated that you know i just tried to turn it off and it took ages so that's i mean does that happen with apple i don't know i don't know perhaps you can tell me um but it does only does with my android phones when they get full of junk they become pretty crap and slow so and i'm sure that will happen with the razor too so who knows but the next thing let's have a look 3d touch i think that's what i don't know it doesn't make any sense to me i'm not bothered about 3d touch uh, the, I think the displays are going to be both are uh, good on both. Uh, the Razer phone is going to has a has a higher uh, resolution, but to be fair, I think they're all going to look pretty uh, pretty sweet. So looking at the cameras, as I say, it's important to me. Now the um, they both seem to have two cameras, both look pretty identical to really. You got the uh, a wide angle lens and you got a zoom lens. And I did try the uh, the, the you know on the iPhone 7 Plus, I did like that. Although it's only a, like a two times optical zoom. It uh, seemed good. Now, from what I can see, the iPhone uh, 10 has optical uh, image stabilization, and I think that could be very, that's, that's very good. You know, for shooting your, your thing for the kids, uh, videos for the kids and things. I don't think the Razer has uh, OIS, so that's a bit of a strike against it there. Of course, you've got uh, these uh, depth sensing uh, sensing features on the on the iPhone, which uh, allows you to um, to do various things with your with your, 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 your you know your front facing camera to do selfies blur the background now i've never been one to to do much in the way of selfies uh, i don't but i can see the value when you're um, perhaps you're walking with a stick and you had a conference or something like that and you want to video yourself you can actually see yourself on the screen and that would be quite useful if it's a good quality picture there and i've tried that on that this and it was pretty crap all right then probably one of the main things is how fast uh, the cpu is i suppose and um I think it's without a doubt the uh, iPhone with its uh, uh, A11 bion Bionic chip is pretty fast, really. I mean, looking at the Geekbench uh, scores compared to Snapdragon A35, it's about twice as fast than there. And I, you know, I've seen even the reviews when it's doing uh, video um, encoding type of thing; it's even faster still. So I think there's probably CPU-wise, there's no comparison between the two. I'm not saying that the Razer, I mean the Razer will be slower than Snapdragon 835, but I am concerned once it gets full of junk, it'll slow into a crawl. Um, so compared to a previous generation, which I looked at the iPhone 7 Plus, uh, it says that the uh, CPU is uh, up to 70% faster. Which is quite amazing, because I thought the iPhone 7 Plus was pretty fast. That's the, uh, the, the four efficiency cores, and the two performance cores, 25% faster. So either it works out it's faster than the iphone 7 plus and i thought that was quite a fast phone so i quite like the idea of that and uh, graphics wise now i don't play games on these i mean there's a few games i play but to be fair they'll probably play on like the first cell phone ever made i mean they're very basic games um so i've never been one for you know i, I looked at titanfall on it and it looked look 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 crap <laughs> it's nothing compared to playing on a computer yeah uh, the a11 chip is uh let's have a look it's about 14 percent faster than the snapdragon 821 which is pretty good it's very interesting when you look at it uh, on notebook check it has some nice comparison charts of where it even fits into some uh, some computer cpus uh, so that's pretty nice to see but uh, 14 percent 14 percent faster than the snapdragon 821 now uh, looking over at the uh, the qualcomm adreno 540 which is the gpu inside the uh, snapdragon 835 it, uh, you know it's quite interesting to see where it is in comparison to say the uh, nvidia gt630 it's only 630m it's only seven percent slower than that so it's good they're catching up to some of these very you know, basic mobile uh, computer gpus but it does the adreno 540 is said to be 25 percent faster in uh, 3d performance compared to its predecessor the 820 uh, snapdragon 821 so Enough. The the, uh, the Snapdragon uh, 835 should be slightly faster GPU wise than the uh, the A11 chip. To me, they're both going to give you gaming just as well. So to me, that's a draw. But to be fair, it probably is slightly faster according to this. 
Now, other things, f face ID. You know, I must admit, gone are the days now where you, you know, type in your password, that was a pain. But uh, I, I, I've always liked having a home button, I must admit. I always like the home button. And uh, the fingerprint thing works pretty good. Now, this face ID, will it work? Supposedly, it adapts to where uh, you're changing your face. You know, if you grow a beard, this type of stuff, it will change. So, but there have been reports that it can be tricked, particularly if you wear glasses, uh, this type of stuff. So, who knows? Augmented reality games. Now, I am a sucker for some of these silly type of game things. I, I, I do VR and everything like that. But will I be using augmented reality games on my phone, shooting aliens in my living room? I might do it for like an hour or two, and then I might. <laughs> And that'll be it. Probably even worse though is the uh, are these uh, emoji things where you you know you pull faces and you do funny emojis. I mean that'd be good for like your first five minutes and then that's it done. But the uh, face ID that would be useful because of course you can use it to pay for for things and so forth. And uh, but it's got to be pretty accurate and set and bang on and work in low light. So I understand from the reviews it does work in low light or in, in the dark. So but uh, the proof will be in the pudding of course. I do like uh, I do like speakers and I do like a good good quality sound come um, through my headphones. I say also just the I mean the speakers aren't so bad, but you know I often put a phone on the countertop and uh, just listen to some music or watching a YouTube channel while I'm eating my breakfast that type of stuff. And uh, the Razer has the uh, Dolby Atmos it says cin cinematic sound experience, and by all accounts, it's got great speakers. Two speakers on either side here uh, front facing and each one has its uh, its, its own driver so um, I think they are supposed to be one of the best the best speakers I mean I, I'm used to the the hopeless ones here on Samsung firing at the bottom the single speaker so I think that would be great and I did have an HTC one M8 and that had good speakers too and it looks similar to that so I'd say that uh, would be a good win there and uh, of course it's uh, certified by THX and uh, I believe that the the dongle which again I hate dongles the foot in the bottom um, has a, a DAC in it uh, for your headphones, so that would be good too. Now it's a shame that both of them are going away without the, um, you know, the three and a half millimeter headphone jack. But you know, I do have some Bluetooth headphones, so I'll probably be okay there. Battery life, another killer. That definitely is important for me. Um, so I've got a little, uh, done a little bit of an analysis here. The um, iPhone 8 Plus had a 2,675 milliamp hour battery, which was according to phone arena lasted around about uh, 635 minutes the uh, samsung galaxy note 8 a 3300 milliamp hour battery and that has the snapdragon 835 in two that lasted around about 470 minutes now the iphone 10 has a slightly larger battery than the uh, the 8 plus so i extrapolated those minutes and that should be around about 644 minutes and the Razer phone has about 4,000 milliamp hour battery, so it's bigger than the Note 8. And that should be around about 570 minutes. It's got the same CPU. Of course, software is going to be slightly different, but you know, just uh, trying to get an estimate here. Um, so, in that regard, and I uh, expect that the iPhone X will certainly last longer than the uh, the Razer. By my calculations, around about 10 to 13 percent or so. So, that can make the the difference. Uh, you know, during uh, getting towards the end of the day. Of course, your iPhone also has a glass back allowing for uh, wireless charging, which is useful. Uh, it has Quick Charge 3.0, while the uh, Razer phone has uh, Quick Charge 4 Plus. So um, that would uh, allow both phones to uh, charge up uh, quickly. Um, however, the uh, Razer should uh, charge up quicker. And it, I believe it does come with the power charger in the box, whilst Apple you have to pay separately. One good plus point, though, the uh, Apple is, uh, is a waterproof phone. So yeah, so that's about it. So let me know what do you think uh, would be the best phone uh, to get. Or shall I go back? Shall I stay with Samsung? Shall I go for the Note 8? Who knows? So anyway, thanks a lot. Look forward to your feedback. Like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.